Pokemon Blaze Black is easily one of the hardest Gen 5 ROM hacks of all time. It's made by the same creator who made Renegade Platinum, so this is sure to be a difficult run. Along with all of that, to ensure this video takes me forever, I'm only going to be allowing myself to catch shiny Pokemon. This video took me months to make, so if you could please hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. While you're down there, leave a like on the video and let me know what your favorite shiny is. With all that being said, there's one more thing I forgot to mention, and that's that this video is a hardcore Nuzlocke as well, which means if a Pokemon dies, it's gone for good. All the additional rules to a hardcore Nuzlocke are on screen now, and with that being said, I'm ready to get into this run. I start this video off the only way you can start a shiny only video, and that's with a shiny starter. For this video, the starter I'm going to be looking for is Tepig, and that's simply because it's just way easier to look for the middle Pokemon in these. I mean, I just have to spam A. Along with that though, Embor is insanely buffed and gets the ability Adaptability, which could be huge for me in the future. The chances of finding a shiny in this game are 1 in every 8,194 encounters. And since I was able to encounter about 10 Tepigs every minute, that means about 600 Tepigs in an hour and roughly about 13 and a half hours for the shiny. Unfortunately for me though, those odds were not in my favor and it took me a solid 5 days to actually catch this shiny. In the end, it was all totally worth it because look at that cute guy. Once I fully received my Tepig, I go over to Bianca's house to let her know we're gonna go see Professor Trunifer and her dad is yelling at her, like screaming. I would feel bad for her, but she honestly deserves it. She's an extremely annoying character. Regardless of that though, pushing forward into the game means I get to nickname my starter and I choose the nickname Alpha and comment down below if you end up finding out what the nickname theme is. Once I do that, I also check out the nature and ability and the ability is amazing. It's adaptability and the nature is just neutral, so it's just okay. That being said, now I've got to go to the next town and meet up with the professor. She shows me how to use a Pokemon Center like I haven't done that a billion times before. Then I see Team Plasma spewing a bunch of propaganda and I just can't have that. So I start my fight with N. His team is some dog water and after I box him like a fish, I move on to the next route where I realize I'm gonna need another Pokemon. This first gym leader will always have the type that I'm weak against, so I need a Pokemon in this grass that'll be able to sweep the entire fight. Thankfully, in about 11 hours, I ended up obtaining that by getting myself a shiny Weedle. Now, usually Weedle's really not that great, but it's actually really good for this gym. I'll tell you guys why a little bit later, but for now, I give it the nickname Bravo, then I check out her nature and I find out its defense up and special attack down, which is kind of useful because Beedrill has no special attack anyways. That being said, I evolved my Weedle all the way up to Beedrill and I do a little bit of EV training while I was doing that. Throughout this whole run, I did a lot of EV training. Pretty much after every time I caught a Pokemon, I would EV train them. This will hopefully make the run a little bit easier considering every single gym leader has six Pokemon. With all that being said though, progressing in the game means I've got to fight against Bianca. Right now, all she's got is Meowth and Snivy, so it's an easy sweep for me. And next up is Charon. Charon's a little bit more difficult given he has a Starly and he's also got an Oshawa, which are super effective against both of my Pokemon, but it doesn't really matter as Bravo is really strong and hits a single cross poison on Starly that one shots. Lastly is Oshawott who gets dealt with by a single cross poison and after that fight with Charon, he gives me the HM for Cut. Thankfully, in this game, Cut is actually a grass type move. This means when I go up against Gym Leader Crest, I'll actually have a super effective move on my B drill. Now, all that's left to do for me before going into this gym is finish off my remaining EV training, get up to the level cap, and fight Crest for my first badge. This battle is actually a triple battle and Crest leads with Oshawa, Totodile, and Squirtle as I lead with my Beedrill and Tepig. Against Totodile, I started by going for a cut, which does over half and brings Totodile down into the red as he then goes for a Dragon Dance. On the next turn, Totodile gets healed up by a potion, but it doesn't matter as I'm able to finish him off with another cut. Now the next Pokemon to come out is Piplup, but it doesn't really matter as it gets rotated into Oshawa. Thankfully, Oshawa isn't as bulky as Totodile is, so a single cut is able to Oko. Next in is Mudkip, and this is a four times super effective cut now, so as you can imagine, it's a one shot. Next up on the chopping block is Panpour. Panpour is hardly able to survive a single cut, and after the next turn, he goes down to two. This leaves only Squirtle and Piplup remaining, and since Cut has been so successful, I decide to spam it a couple more times until eventually both of these Pokemon go down and I get the first badge. Right after walking outside of the first gym, I meet up with Professor Fennel, and she takes me into her lab and lets me know I need to get some Dream Mist. For that, I've got to go to the Dream Yard, and once I make it here, I witness Team Plasma doing some awful things to this poor Muna. After calling up Pita and getting rid of them, I'm able to take the Dream Mist to Dr. Fennel so I can move on to Route 3. On Route 3, I've got a battle against Charon, but it's pretty simple. He has four Pokemon and mine are kind of just better at the moment, so I'm able to defeat him pretty easily. Now we got some more Team Plasma shenanigans and I end up chasing them into this cave and where we've got a double battle. Charon helps me out with this and we defeat them pretty simply as now I'm able to actually shiny hunt in this cave and there's a ton of good encounters I can get from here, but I'm looking for a Zubat. Crobat is just an insanely good early game Pokemon and the encounter chance is actually pretty high, so I'm hoping I can get it in a 
about maybe 10 hours. Unfortunately though, it takes me about 15 hours to find a Woobat, which is kind of not that good. I give Woobat the nickname Charlie, and I start to look at this Pokemon more, and it could be way better than I expect it to be. My Woobat's got the ability Klutz, and when Woobat evolves into Swoobat, it gets simple, which is just an insanely good ability. Along with that, I've got a modest nature, and Swoobat actually has tons of buffs in this game, and its speed and special attack stat are raised by a lot. On top of all that, it's a friendship evolution, so after running around for a little bit and raising my friendship up, I'm actually able to evolve him immediately. Now I go into the next city and have a double battle against N, and this goes by pretty quickly. I did get pretty scared though when Alpha got brought down to 1 HP, but it ended up being just fine as we won the battle and are ready to go into the next gym. Once I finish beating the gym trainers, I end up EV training Charlie a little bit in speed and special attack, and now I'm ready to challenge Lenora in my second gym battle. Lenora leads the battle with Stantler and Herdier, as I lead with Alpha and Charlie. Both of these Pokemon have Intimidate, so when they hit me with it, Alpha's going down to minus 2 attack as Charlie goes down to minus 4. This is because Simple doubles every single stat change on the field, so I don't want to use a physical attack with Charlie. Regardless, the first move I go for here is switching out Alpha into Bravo so I can get rid of that stat change. I also attempt to kill Stantler with a flying gem boosted hidden power, but it actually doesn't kill and leaves him down with a sliver. On that same turn, both Stantler and Herdier double into Bravo with Retaliate, and this is not good. I know for a fact though that Lenore is going to heal in the next turn, and both Bravo and Charlie outspeed Herdier, so I double into him. Herdier easily goes down to that, and Stantler gets healed up back to full. After taking out Herdier, Charlie levels up and is able to learn a new move, Air Cutter. Now, Air Cutter is a really good move here, as it's able to hit both Pokemon in the field at the same time. So I use it to replace Gust, and the next Pokemon to come out is Ferret. So with Charlie, I start off by going for an Air Cutter on both of them that does about half. This gives Bravo a little bit of free reign to kill one of these two Pokemon, so I decide to take out Stantler. Charlie then gets hit by a Thunderbolt, but it doesn't do too much damage, only bringing me down to 55. Now the fourth Pokemon, Bufalant, gets sent in, and this is really scary. Bufalant is an extremely strong Pokemon that can deal with all of my team. Thankfully, I've got a pretty solid plan though, and that's to go for Air Cutter with Swoobat to take out Ferret and do about half to Bufalant. Since Bravo outspeeds Bufalant, I'm able to go for a gem boosted X Scissor that absolutely demolishes this poor thing, and she goes down, leading into the final two Pokemon. These last two are Watchhog and Babarel, and I start out by going for another Air Cutter with Charlie. This Air Cutter does about half to Babarel and almost kills Watchhog because of a critical hit, but he ends up healing a little bit with the Citrus Berry. In that same turn, I go for a cut with Bravo to finish off a barrel and leave me with only Watchhog. Now, right now, if Watchhog wanted to, he could easily take out Bravo. All he has to do is go for Retaliate on her, and it's over. Weirdly enough, though, the AI doesn't see the kill and goes for a Retaliate on Charlie, bringing me down to 12 HP remaining. But now, I'm able to just take out Watchhog in the next turn. Both of my Pokemon easily outspeed this thing, and a hidden power from Charlie finishes this battle and wins me my second gym badge. After the gym, we find Team Plasma stealing this giant skull, and we chase them down to Pinwheel Forest. Going through this forest is a big time chore considering there is tons of Team Plasma members and just basic trainers to go through, but eventually I make it all the way to the end and get the Dragonite Skull back so I can go into Castellia City. Once I get into Castellia, we find out that Bianca's Pokemon was actually stolen, and because she's like, sort of, my friend, I decide to go help her out, and we get the Pokemon back. That being said, that doesn't take that long, and the next step is to walk into the gym and move through these walls of honey that sound awful to get to the gym leader, Berg. Berg leads the battle with Masquerade and Vespaquin as I lead with Charlie and Alpha. Vespaquin is Intimidate, which immediately lowers my attack stat for both of my two Pokemon in the field, so right away I decide to switch out Alpha for Bravo. I then set up a Calm Mind with Charlie, and because I have the ability Simple, I'm able to get plus two in both Special Attack and Special Defense. Now unfortunately for Bravo, she's got to tank both a Scald from Masquerade and an Acrobatics from Vespaquin, which is just impossible for a Beedrill to handle, so she gets taken down. That means I've got my first death in the run so far, but it's actually worth it, because now I can easily defeat this gym. With Bravo down, Alpha comes back out, but he really doesn't need to be here because Charlie has this battle handled. Against Masquerade and Vespaquin, I go for an air cutter that's super effective, and it takes down both of them. Next up is Heracross and Scolipede, and Heracross is four times weak to flying, and Scolipede has horrible special defense, so they both go down to another one-shot. Lastly is Levani and Yanmega, and Yanmega actually is the only one who gets hit by this next air cutter because Levani avoids it. Air cutter Oko's the Yanmega, and Alpha's got Flame Charge on Levani, which is four times super effective, so she goes down, and I get my third badge. With that badge, I move on to Route 4, where there's just a bunch of desert. In this desert lies a very special Pokemon, and that's Sandile. In the latter half of the game, the evolution of Sandile, Crocodile, is extremely good, and I want him for this next gym and everything beyond that. So here on Route 4 is where I elect to start my next shiny hunt. This shiny hunt was genuinely brutal, and it took me a whole 17 days to find a shiny 
shiny I wasn't even looking for, Darumaka. Listen, no hate to this little guy, but dang, I did not want this thing. I've already got a fire type. If that whole unfortunate sequence of events isn't enough for you to subscribe, I don't know what will be. Regardless, I catch him and give him the nickname Delta, check out his nature, which is serious, and I find out his ability is hustle, which goes into sheer force, which is kind of good. That being said though, I still haven't forgotten about my crocodile, so I go up to the desert resort to see if I can get one more chance at catching this amazing Pokemon. This shiny hunt took significantly less time than the first, and in only about four hours, I ended up with a shiny Sandile, which is just great. I give Sandile the nickname Echo, then check out its nature and ability and find out that this thing is absolutely juiced. Its nature is Jolly, which raises its speed and lowers its special attack, and since I'm not using special attack, the speed boost is much appreciated. Along with that, it's got the ability Moxie, which means if I kill a couple of Pokemon, my attack stat is going to be through the roof. Now, after completely revamping the team, I'm ready to go into Nimbasa City. On my way there, I evolve my Pig Knight into Envor, then I meet this crying old man who needs some help with Team Plasma. These guys get bulldozed pretty easily, and now I'm able to go to this fashion contest with Bianca and play dress up with my Embor. I give Embor a little skirt, and I also give him a little Maraca just to completely drip him out, and then after walking outside of this building, I see Bianca getting yelled at by her father, but I don't care about Bianca at all, so walk right past her. I actually did that so quickly because I've got a date coming up, and it's with our guy N. N is so romantic. He takes me to this little theme park and takes me on this Ferris wheel where we just sit and talk for a little bit. And then he ruins the entire thing by telling me he's the leader of Team Plasma and I've got to fight him. This was an absolutely tragic way of ending things, but I don't care. I defeat him in the battle and now I'm on to the fourth gym leader, Elisa. Before this battle, I evolve Echo and Delta into their respective evolutions. Then I go into the fight as she leads with Amolga as I lead with Darmanitan. With Delta, I start out by going for a fire punch that annihilates Amolga and gets off a one shot, but unfortunately, I get paralyzed due to static. The next Pokemon to get sent in is Ampharos, who's faster than me because I'm paralyzed, and he likes to go for a charge. I tried to go for a fire punch, but I couldn't because it got fully paralyzed, so in the next turn, I switch into Embor just in case Ampharos goes for like a Thunderbolt or something. Instead of doing that, Ampharos goes for a second charge, which allows me to get off a free Bulldoze in the next turn, which one-shots Ampharos easily. Now the next Pokemon's in, which is Raichu, who hits me with a Focus Blast that does 40 to me as I go for another Bulldoze that one-shots. The next Pokemon's Galvantula that starts out by going for an Energy Ball that takes me down to 67 as I then go for a Flame Charge that's gem boosted so it easily burns up this bug. Because of that Flame Charge, I'm able to outspeed both of Elisa's two remaining Pokemon and go for two Bulldozes, which finishes him off and wins me my fourth badge. Before my next rival battle against Charon on the next route, I evolve Crocorock into Crocodile and I'm kind of ready for this fight. To be honest, it's kind of a simple one and I'm able to make quick work of him before going into my next fight against some preschoolers? After brutally taking down those kids, I'm able to go into Driftvale City. This city's got a bit of a Team Plasma problem and it's all taking place in the cold storage, which is kind of just the worst place to set up a headquarters. Regardless, I eventually find them all huddled up in a shipping container and after individually taking out every single one of them, I'm able to go challenge the gym leader. Clay leads the fight with Hippowdon as I lead with Charlie. With Charlie, I start out by going for a Calm Mind as Hippowdon goes for a Stone Edge that does massive damage to me, bringing me down to 38 HP. I now go for a Psychic and because of that Calm Mind, I'm able to one-shot and bring out the next Pokemon Marowak who also gets one-shotted by a Psychic. With that, the third Mon comes out and it's Crocodile and for this, I go for a gem boosted Air Slash that takes him down and brings out the fourth Pokemon, Excadrill. Both flying moves and psychic moves aren't very effective against Excadrill, so I elect to switch out into Alpha. Because my Swoobat was low, when I switched into Alpha, I ended up getting hit by an X Scissor that's not very effective, so it only did 20 damage. I'm now free to go for a Bulldoze on Excadrill and because he's a Steel type, it's super effective and he goes down, leading into the fifth Pokemon, Seismitoad. Now this Pokemon, Seismitoad, is a real issue as I don't have anything that kills it easily. Along with this, all of my Pokemon die to a single Muddy Water, so switching out is kind of just useless. With all that being said though, Muddy Water really isn't that accurate of a move, so the best option I have here is to actually stick in with Embor. I have to get extremely lucky that I don't get hit by Muddy Water, as it's a guaranteed one-shot. And I actually do. I avoid a Muddy Water and get off a Bulldoze. This Bulldoze lowers Seismitoad's speed, so after Clay heals, I'm able to go for two more to take down Seismitoad and lead into the final Pokemon. The final Pokemon is Steelix, who goes down to two Bulldozes, which allows me to get myself my fifth badge. With that fifth gym down, I'm able to go into Charge Stone Cave, which is honestly probably my favorite part of Pokemon Black and White. In this cave, after I talk with N for a little bit, I realize there is a lot of good Pokemon. Pretty much everything I can find in here is amazing, so this is where I start my next shiny hunt. This shiny hunt took a really long time, about four days to be specific, and it ended up being a shiny Joltik. Now, Joltik really isn't the best Pokemon I could have got here, but it's okay because Galvantula is really good for the next gym. That being said, after catching Joltik, I give 
the nickname Foxtrot, then immediately evolve him into a Galvantula. I then do all the EV training I need to before I go into this next fight against N. In this fight, he's got all available Rotoms, which means it's kind of just easy for me to sweep with just Crocodile. After that fight, I find myself in Mistralton City, where I get to go up this Celestial Tower to see Skyla. We end up ringing the bell at the top of the tower, and I could put another YouTube plug in here, say, go hit the notification bell, but... I won't, but you really should do that. Anyways, after pushing past her, I'm able to go into the gym, slam my face into a couple of walls using these massive cannons, which, I mean, it's just so unsafe. Regardless of that, though, I get my entire team up to the level cap and start my triple battle with Skyla. Again, this is a triple battle, so it's going to be a little bit hard to commentate over, but I'll give it my best shot. She leads with Mandibuzz, Skarmory, and Braviary, as I lead with Foxtrot, Charlie, and Delta. With Foxtrot, I start out by going for an Electro Ball on Braviary, which does over half. Braviary then heals a little bit with a Citrus Berry, as I then go for a Flying Gem Boosted Air cutter on the entire team. That move did just enough damage so that with Delta, I can go for a Flare Blitz that takes down Mandibuzz. This is massive for me as Mandibuzz had Tailwind, which could have changed this entire fight. That being said though, the turn ends with Skarmory going for a Spikes and Braviary going for a Bulk Up, and the next Pokemon to come in is Archeops. Skyla starts out by healing up Braviary with a Hyper Potion as I just bring Braviary back down into the yellow with another Electro Ball. I then go for a Psychic and Fire Punch combo in Archeops to take him down because he's kind of a really strong Pokemon. With that, Skarmory sets up a second Spikes as the next Pokemon Glyscore gets sent in. Finally, on the fourth turn, I'm able to go for a fourth Electro Ball that finally takes Braviary down, and this is really huge for me. With Charlie, I go for a Psychic on Glyscore that gets a lucky crit and ends up taking him down, as with Delta, I go for a Flare Blitz on Skarmory, and this is just, this battle's over. After switching around a couple of times, I eventually take Swana down, and this wins me my sixth badge. That gym right there was a piece of cake, but I'm kinda a little bit worried about the next one, just because it's ice and I've got a lot of ground types. I start my journey towards that area with a triple battle against against Charon, but Charon's team is all like level 55s and 53s, and since mine is basically entirely level 57, I'm easily able to wipe. All of this brings me into Twist Mountain, where I've got a bunch of Team Plasma to deal with, but before I go deal with them, I decide to go into Mistralton Cave. This cave is another one of those places where basically everything in it is a good Pokemon I can catch for my team, with the exception of Rhydon and Onyx. With that all being said though, this is where I start what could be my final shiny hunt of this video. This shiny hunt certainly didn't disappoint time-wise or Pokemon-wise, as in about 30 13 days, I ended up finding myself a shiny Axew. Haxorus has one of the coolest shinies in all of Pokemon, and it's a really solid mon that I can use throughout the entire rest of this game. With all that being said, I give Axew the nickname Golf, then I evolve him all the way up to a Haxorus. While doing that, I did all the EV training I needed to, and I checked out the ability, which was Mold Breaker, and the Nature, which was Special Attack Down and Special Defense Up, which is kind of solid. With my seventh shiny of the video finally acquired, I go back through Twist Mountain to find myself in Icarus City. In this city, there's nothing to do other than challenge the seventh gym leader. Bryson leads the video with a Bomb Snow and Glaceon, as I lead with Delta and Foxtrot. Both of these Pokemon are really solid, but it doesn't really matter, considering Foxtrot has Bug Buzz, so a Bomb Snow goes down to a clean one shot, and the same thing happens to Glaceon to a Fire Punch. The next two Pokemon to get sent in are Beartick and Frostlass. Now, at the start of this turn, the first thing I do is switch out Galvantula for my Embor. Then, with Delta, I decide to go for a Fire Punch on Beartick, and because of my ability Sheer Force, I'm able to get the KO. On that same turn, Embor gets hit pretty hard by a Shadow Ball that takes me down to 140. 43 remaining. Now with three Pokemon remaining, the next one to come in is Vanillux. On this next turn, I'm actually in a really good position, as Alpha has Sucker Punch, and that's super effective against Frostlass. So that means it's an easy Oko, and the same thing happens to Vanillux with a Fire Punch. Now the last Pokemon in is Cryogonal, and this thing doesn't stand a chance. I simply go for a Sucker Punch and Fire Punch combo to take it down and get my seventh badge. Right after the gym, I start my journey up Dragon Spiral Tower, where I've got to fight a load of Team Plasma. These Team Plasma members aren't much, and it's shocking how bad their teams are. Even after four of them gang up on me, I'm still able to make my way to the top and meet up with N, who just runs away from me. I track him back all the way to the Desert Resort on Route 4, and after successfully making it to the bottom of there, I see Getsis. He seems to believe in some great Team Plasma castle and whatever, but I'm sure that's not really that important. Regardless, after receiving the Lightstone from Lenora, I've got my final rival battle against Bianca. This fight is honestly a piece of cake, because Bianca's team is basically all level 63, and mine is all the way up to 65. Now, all that's left is to go into Opelucid and challenge the 8th gym, but right when I make it here, I see Team Plasma spewing even more propaganda. They've even got their signs up and everything. Getsis is chanting about change and all that stuff, but he eventually packs his bags and gets out of there, so I'm able to challenge the 8th and final gym leader. This fight is a rotation battle, and Drayden leads with Drudagon, Flygon, and Charizard. To be honest, this is kind of hard for me to deal with, but I ended up just bringing out Galvantula, Swoobat, and Crocodile. Leading with Charlie means I'm ready to start out by going for a Calm Mind. This puts me at plus 2 special attack and plus 2 special defense, as 
Raiden uses his turn by going for an Outrage. This doesn't really matter too much as it only brings me down to below half, and on the next turn, a Psychic finishes off Dredagon. This leads Draiden into his next Pokemon, Kingdra. Now, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I could go through the rest of this fight slowly, or I can just tell you what happened, and I'm gonna choose the latter. Swoobat is an absolute menace, and I was able to one-shot the rest of Draiden's team with only Psychic. Kingdra, Salamence, Haxorus, Charizard, and Flygon all go down to one-shots from Psychic, and that earns me my final badge of this run. Now, I've only got a handful of things left to do before heading up to the Elite Four. So, after completing my final batch of EV training, I'm able to get into my last rival battle with Charon. Much like Bianca, his Pokemon aren't good enough or high enough level to deal with my team. So, after taking a couple of minutes to dismantle his entire six-team set, I go all the way up Victory Road and find myself in the Pokemon League. These Elite Four fights could be a real challenge for my team. Every single one of these Elite Four battles is a double battle, and for this first one against Grimsley, I decide to lead with my Swoobat and Crocodile. Grimsley starts with Sharpedo and Lightpart, and because I know Lightpart has Sucker Punch, I decide to go for a Calm Mind with Charlie so I don't get hit by it, and I go for an Earthquake on everybody. Because it's Ground Gem boosted, and Lightpart and Sharpedo don't really have that great of defensive stats, I'm able to take them both out with a single one. This gives Echo a double Moxie boost, and brings out the next two Pokemon, Houndoom and Bisharp. Both of these two Pokemon are weak to Ground, so when I go for an Earthquake, it one-shots Bisharp, and Houndoom gets brought down to 1 HP. With Charlie, I go for another Calm Mind, because I knew Houndoom was going to survive, because he has a Focus Sash. Houndoom then hits me with a Dark Pulse that would have done huge damage with a crit, but thankfully it doesn't, and on the next turn, Grimsley heals Houndoom with a full restore. He also ends up bringing his Honchkrow, who can't get hit by my Earthquake, but I decide to go for it anyways to take down the Houndoom. Also, because I went for a Calm Mind in the last turn, I'm actually able to do enough damage to Honchkrow with an Air Cutter to finish her off. This means that Grimsley's onto his last Pokemon, Absol, and because Echo is at like plus a billion with Moxie, I just take him down with a one-shot from Earthquake, and that ends up winning me my first Elite Four battle. Next up is Marshall, who leads with Throw and Sock, as I end up bringing out my exact same team. This duo is low-key unstoppable, as I go for an Earthquake on Throw and Sock that brings them both down to about half HP remaining. On that same turn, I go for a Jam Boosted Air Cutter that finishes off both of them. Now, Marshall brings in Poliwrath and Menshaw, and because I'm not really confident Echo is going to survive either of these two Pokemon, I decide to switch out into my Haxorus. While I do that, I go for a Calm Mind with Charlie, and Haxorus ends up getting hit by a U-Turn and a Waterfall. That U-Turn switches Mianxiao out for Conkelder, and because I went for that Calm Mind in the last turn, I'm at plus two special attack, so now I just go for an Air Cutter. Against these fighting types, Air Cutter is simply broken. I'm able to go for one, and it takes out both of them. On the final turn comes Breloom and Mianxiao, and Breloom starts out by going for a Mach Punch that hits Golf and does huge damage, bringing me down to 47, and on the next turn, I get off an Air Cutter that takes down Mianxiao and leaves Breloom with one HP. Unfortunately for Breloom though, I've got Golf going for a Dragon Claw, so he goes down, and that wins me my second Elite Four battle. The next fight's against Chantal, and for the third time in a row, I lead with Echo and Charlie. The two Pokemon she leads with is Drifbloom and Golurk, and for this Golurk, I decide to go for a Crunch that's gem boosted, and it ends up doing enough to take out Golurk with a one-shot. Now with Charlie, I go for a Shadow Ball and Drifbloom, which I figured would do enough damage, but it actually doesn't, and it leaves Drifbloom with a sliver. Drifbloom then hits me with a Thunderbolt that brings me down to 95 remaining, and she ends up getting burned by her Flame Orb. With that, the next Pokemon Frostlass comes in, and Drifbloom ends up healing up with a full restore. On that same turn, I went for a Sucker Punch on Frostlass, because I kind of figured she would outspeed Echo, and thankfully, I was actually right about this, and the Sucker Punch did enough damage to one-shot. With Charlie, I do the same thing, going for another Shadow Ball, and Drifbloom gets left with a sliver once again. Now, Echo's at plus two attack due to Moxie, and when Jellicent gets sent in, it's kind of a beefy Pokemon, so I wasn't sure if I would be able to one-shot, but thankfully, I actually do. With that, a third Shadow Ball finally finishes off Drifbloom, and leads into the final two Pokemon, Miss Magius and Chandelure. I realize that I've got to take out Embor right away, and since I'm at plus four, basically anything I do kills it, so I just go for a Sucker Punch on her, and for Charlie, I end up switching out into my Embor. Chandelure, of course, gets wiped by a Sucker Punch, and Miss Magius goes for a Shadow Ball on Alpha that takes me down to 185. I mean, on the next turn, it's grits for this poor thing, as a plus five Crunch is easily able to wipe her, and that is my third Elite Four battle. For my last Elite Four battle, Caitlyn ends up leading with Musharna and Sigilyph, as I start with Charlie and Echo. With Echo, I start by going for a Dark Gem boosted Crunch on Musharna, and it's enough to one-shot, as with Charlie, I go for a Calm Mind. Sigilyph then hits Echo with an Ice Beam, as now on the next turn, I go for another Crunch, this time on Gothitelle. Gothitelle survives the Crunch, but it honestly doesn't matter that much, as Sigilyph ends up going down to my Gem boosted Shadow Ball. On that same turn, Gothitelle ends up getting me real worried, as she goes for a Trick Room. My main goal here was to really try to stop them from setting that up, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Caitlyn now brings out Raniculus, and I'm actually really scared. Looking at these two Pokemon's movesets means I've gotta make 
a really good switch here, and I think an all around good decision is to move into Foxtrot. On the switch in, Foxtrot gets hit by an energy ball that's four times not very effective, but it still does 61 damage. I then get hit by a thunderbolt from Gothitelle, but since my special defense is at plus two because of the Calm Mind, I'm easily able to survive it. Now I go for my Air Cutter, which takes down Gothitelle and does about half to Reniculus. Now on the next turn, Reniculus goes for a thunder on Foxtrot, which does a good bit of damage, as then Bronzong decides to go for a rest for some reason. That allows me to get off a free Shadow Ball on Bronzong that takes him down to about a fifth remaining. Foxtrot being the fastest Pokemon in the field goes last and hits a Bug Buzz on Reniculus that takes her down. Now Caitlyn's onto her final Pokemon, Behem. Wait, Behem? I don't know. I start this turn out by switching out Foxtrot for Golf, and Caitlyn starts out by healing Bronzong with a full restore. To be honest with you though, this is a pretty useless move, as when Behem hits me with a Thunderbolt, I survive, and I'm actually able to go for another Shadow Ball that kills because I got a special defense drop earlier. To be completely safe on the second to last turn, I decide to move Charlie out for Alpha. Now Haxor ends up getting hit by a Psychic that takes me down to 100, and I go for an Exorcist that brings Behem into the red. After this turn, the Dimension's twisted back to normal, but it didn't matter anyways, as I go for a Sucker Punch that takes out Behem and wins my final Elite Four battle. Now I get to sit through this really janky Team Plasma cutscene and I watch all of my gym leader friends stop Team Plasma as I go to fight N and Getsis. As I'm on the chase, I end up meeting up with these two baddies and one of them ends up healing up my Pokemon which is really good as I'm now ready to go start my fight with N. To be completely honest with y'all, this battle is un- fair with a Krugodile, simply just unfair. I start this battle off with Echo as N leads with his Zekrom, but it's not actually Zekrom, it's Zorark. Zorark has basically no defense, so I'm able to one shot with a single Earthquake, get a plus one Moxie boost leading into the next Pokemon. Magmortar is a fire type who's weak to ground, so an Earthquake easily kills, and that's another Moxie boost going into the third. This one's slow bro, and for this I'm just able to go for a simple Crunch that's able to take him down and lead into the next Mon, Porygon. Porygon gets taken out by Earthquake, and the next Mon, Aerodactyl, is taken down by a Crunch. This leads into the last Pokemon, Zekrom, who's an electric type, and I'm at like plus five attack at this point, so it's an easy one shot, and that's my battle against N. For my last one, I've got to go up against Getsis, but this one really isn't that much more difficult. He leads with his Drapion as I lead with Echo again, and I just go for an Earthquake and it gets taken down. Next up is Hydreigon, who would be extremely scary if I didn't have Outrage, but thankfully I do, so it's an easy one shot. Unfortunately, now I'm locked into using Outrage, when the next Pokemon Genesect comes out, and even at plus two, I do basically no damage to this thing. On that same turn, it sets up a Rock Polish, raising its speed, which is really scary for me to have to deal with. Knowing that its speed is raised, and that I don't really have anything left for Echo to fight here, I just decide to go for a Sucker Punch, and I actually get it off, but it doesn't kill. This leads Genesect into hitting me with a Bug Buzz, which ends up being my second death of the run, which is honestly pretty surprising. I know that Getsis is going to heal here, so I like to bring in my Darmanitan and go for a four times super effective fire punch, but it doesn't kill because of Getsus's Focus Sash. This means that on the next turn, I've got to eat a Thunderbolt before going for another Fire Punch, finally taking out Genesect. Getsus is now onto his fourth Pokemon, Dusk Noir, so I immediately switch out into Charlie so I don't get hit by an Earthquake. On the next turn, I set up a Calm Mind as Dusk Noir hits me with a Payback, doing a ton of damage, bringing me all the way down to 92 remaining. Because I set up that Calm Mind though, I'm able to go for a Shadow Ball on the next turn, which finishes off Dusk Noir and leads into the next Pokemon, Electros. Electros goes down to a single Psychic, and brings out the final Pokemon, Gyarados. Gyarados being pretty tanky doesn't actually go down to a Psychic, and lives and hits me with an Aqua Tail which takes out my Swoobat. This ends up being pretty bittersweet though, as Gyarados still goes down because of its Life Orb, and that wins me my final battle of this run. This run ended up taking me four ever to complete, so if you did enjoy this video, if you could subscribe and leave a like, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all for watching, and that was my attempt at a Pokemon Blaze Black Hardcore Nuzlocke using only shiny Pokemon.